All right, Spring Boot 3.4 is out and with it comes Spring Integration 6.4, your one-stop shop for all matters integration. Uh, and of course, this is a technology that aims to make it easy to build and integrate systems and services. And obviously, the more we move forward in time, the larger the body of things that need to be integrated with, right? Uh, the more things that become so-called so legacy, uh, the more modern software has to sort of integrate and uh, extend and leverage that. And uh, Spring Integration is, I think, one of the best ways to do that if not the best. And uh, so th there's a lot of stuff already there. Uh, this release comes with a bunch of stuff. Obviously, I wrote a blog about it here uh, just a few days ago. Uh, there's a what's new section in the release. Uh, you know, these are the release notes. So let's just go through some of the basics here before we dive into one of my favorite features. Uh, there's a new base me me message builder class that's been extracted so that if you should like to build your own message builder class in the image of the canonical message builder one, uh, you can do that. Um, a new control bus interaction model has been established with a com control bus command registry uh, and a control bus factory bean class. Uh, yeah, you can you can do that as well. There's a con control bus controller. Uh, these are my this is my favorite stuff, right? These two things here, the control bus and the in the controller. Uh, we have new support for the optimized. Uh, accessors of the Spring Expression language. We have uh, the ability to configure a custom task scheduler when configuring the source pulling channel adapter spec. Remote file systems like FTP and uh, FTPS and so on have clear fetched cache implementation. Uh, the JDBC implementations uh, now just delegate directly to the JDBC driver underpinning the, uh, the integration uh, rather than having a specialized lob handler. Um, we've also updated the distributed lock support both in the, the JDBC and the Redis uh, implementations. We've got the ability to run a zero MQ message handler on the port of your prescription as opposed to having to give it a full host and port and all that stuff in a URL. We have deprecated for removal uh, the Goovy language uh, control bus factory bean in XML. And, uh, you know, we, we, we recommend the, the new support, which we'll get into in just a second. Um, if you want to customize, speaking of remote file systems, if you want to customize the default SFTP session factory, or rather, if you want to customize the SSH client for the default SFTP uh, session factory, uh, there's now a, uh, a con you can provide a consumer that'll do that. Uh, we have support here for dynamically uh, creating new instances of MT MQTTT and MQTTT v5 uh, PAHO message driven channel adapters. Uh, we have uh, support here for a file name generator in the uh, zip transformer. Uh, this Python support now. Uh, you know, speaking of scripting languages, now that uses the Gravium Truffle Polyglot uh, Python language implementation, and we support a new flag in the inbound uh, uh, mail support. Okay, good. Let's get into one of my big favorite features here, which is the control bus support. So we go back to our implementation here, right? And this class is a, you know, it's a public static void main. It's got a um, XML. I've got Spring. I went to start that Spring and I added Spring. Uh, I just chose integration. I chose web. And of course, I chose GraalVM, and uh, Spring Integration HTTP was added for me, and that gave me everything I needed. So I'm, I just left it there. What I've done is I've got a configuration class, that's this, and I'm creating an integration flow uh, to enable the control bus. Now, what's the control bus? Well, in the enterprise integration world, uh, enterprise integration is about integrating different systems in terms of messages, right? And if you ever read uh, Gregor Hoppe's amazing book, he talks about four different types of integration styles. You've got shared database, you've got RPC, you've got shared file system, and you've got messaging. And you know they all have their pros and cons, but if you want the most flexibility, the most decoupling, the most optionality, et cetera, then messaging gets you most of the benefits of all the other ones uh, combined. So messaging is decoupled, it's asynchronous, you don't have to, producer and consumer don't have to know about each other, they don't have to exist in the same time, they're not in the same transaction, they're not in the same space, it's just a, it's a good paradigm, and it's nice and easy to write code in terms of messages, and the way we think about it is messages flow through channels. And this is how you integrate systems. You write components that are small and singly focused, and they deal with messages that come in and then go out, right? Messages in, messages out. That's like a pipes and filters architecture. And uh, it really works well. If you want to change the state of, a, of something in the system, you create a message that goes into the system via a message queue, a channel, a, you know, a destination of some sort, uh, that goes to a processor which then updates the state. Well, if it's so good for our business services and functionality, why wouldn't it also therefore be good for the administration of the messaging system itself? And that's what the control bus pattern is. It's saying we can use the same substrate that we use to affect change in our business logic and our business services 
uh, to affect change in the system, in the administration of the system itself. And so that component that receives messages, that responds to those messages, that affects change in response to those messages is called the control bus. And uh, so we are going to configure the control bus just like we configure any other integration flow in Spring Integration. We're gonna have a message channel, which I've defined here. It's a direct message channel, so point to point, not pub sub. As messages come in this channel, we're gonna listen for the messages that come in the channel, and we're gonna route them to this control bus registry, okay? Messages in, go to control bus, okay? Simple. Now, uh, what does the control bus do? Well, it enlists uh, and makes available and responds to messages that are intended for managed resources. Now, you might recognize this managed resource. This is the same kind of managed resource that Spring supports uh, for JMX, right? This is actually Org Spring Framework JMX Export Annotation. This annotation, when it's put on a bean, uh, tells Spring that, uh, that, that this is intended to be a JMX resource. So you can actually create a class, uh, annotate it with this, and uh, annotate handlers with this method uh, annotation, and, uh, and, and then that's it. This is now controllable. This is accessible via uh, JMX. You have to register this bean as well. This is not a component stereotype annotation, so that's why I'm registering it here as a Spring bean. I suppose I could have just put at component on this as well, right? Uh, that would have worked, but just to be very clear that this is not the same as, this is not a stereotype annotation. Remember, this actually, pre this in annotation is from Spring Framework 1.2, so it predates uh, the stereotype annotations in Spring Framework 2.05, I think, or is it, or, uh, sorry, 2.0 or 2.5, I think it's 2.5. Let's see, controller, 2.5, yeah, okay, so there's that, and go to component, there you go, 2.5. So it predates that by years, many, many years. Uh, all that to say, this is a component that has methods that are mapped for export in JMX. Well, now you can map them as well for uh, export in this control bus, okay? So let's take a look at this in, in, in action, okay? The way it's gonna work is I'm gonna send a message into this channel, directly in my case, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll see that, that this results in calling this bean called my operations managed resource dot update magic number with a parameter of type int. Okay, so we've got a test here. Let's go there. And here we go. My operations managed resource dot update magic number. We're sending a header in the message. And the header has a, you know, it's a key and value, right? It's a map. So the key is control bus arguments. And the value is 42. Okay, so I'm calling update magic number with 42, which is indeed a magic number. So I'm, and I've got a counter in this, in this, uh, silly example here, I've got an atomic integer, it's zero by default, but when you call this, it'll increment that. So our test should therefore confirm that it's zero before we send the message, then we send the message, and then afterwards it's one. Okay, let's try this out. Okay, and so that's that's really convenient, right? That's actually showing, uh, you know, the test is working. The other thing that's really nice is that there's also this nice new annotation called at enable control bus controller. This comes from Spring Integration 6.4. And what this does is it installs a controller that you can use to then audit these uh, commands. So let's do that here. We'll go to the command line. Say curl HTTP localhost 8080 forward slash control dash bus. Okay, and I'll pass in JQ. And uh, there you are. You can see we've got these different commands, different beans uh, that will respond to messages. So this is a nice look at how you can easily affect uh, change and administer the system using the control bus. Hope you got something out of this. Please don't hesitate to try the bits out. Go to start.spring.io, download now.